and welcome to the DMs Book Club, a weekly podcast where each episode, me and Fiona or some other random person talk about some Dungeons and Dragons and how we can fit it into our role playing campaigns. That was so sounded like I was being really like passive aggressive. Passive aggressive. Wow. Else is on last week, which I'm not. <laughs> I'm really not. I was just. I got lost in the moment because yeah. I started saying me and Fiona and then realised, no, other people come on the show. We have other folks on here. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And then I didn't want to then, th- and I was like, do I list them all? But in that moment, I just had to say other folks. And that was... Other friends of the show. Other people. <laughs> other randos. No, other actually great and informed, much betterly informed people. Than either of us, to be fair. Us, yeah, so. we're just there going like, this is nice. <laughs> yeah. I like the game. <laughs> I like I like dice myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. D12. Uh, how are you, Hamilton? How's everything? Yeah, good. I had some good news this morning, as you know. Yeah. So Woo-hoo. I'm happy for that. Very happy. I'm not allowed to tell people in the office. So you can tell your friends and family. I was like, oh, great. Thank you. But okay. So, and then you told me. <laughs> so I, I was told, like, hey. I did tell my wife first. Yeah. yeah I no, I assumed, my did. Mom. I assumed you did. <laughs> she didn't answer. I was like, geez. Oh, look at me. Hell. In a circle for Fiona. Hooray. I've done it. <laughs> you just happened to be there, Fiona. Uh, oh. <laughs> Sad inside. <laughs> um, how are you, Fiona? I'm good. I had a, an interesting morning of dealing with uh, what we love, lovingly call the NHS. Mm. Uh, yeah, and it's just you know what I get it. Admin is difficult, and I put it off. And no wonder people put off going to the doctors. Uh, yeah. But my God, I've come away two steps back from where I was. <laughs> yeah, confused, <laughs> so gonna, more confused, con- more confused. <laughs> but I now have a plan, so I'm ready to go again tomorrow because I, as i was saying to hamilton that i i went in several times and i was like yeah. i can't deal with this anymore i i look like an idiot <laughs> but otherwise i'm really good I've, I've been really enjoying i don't know if we've mentioned it on the podcast i've been enjoying our secret film clubs we've been doing yes on yeah, the Discord. I think we have done a recording since we've started the film club no. so i've really enjoyed it yeah they've been quite fun so we've been watching we watched both uh dune films yeah uh, old and new and we've got plans to do some more it's just I, again i was like oh when you said about like oh we could watch them on twitch and i was like hmm this sounds illegal i'm in so- yeah <laughs> pirate fiona <laughs> Yar. Da, 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 da. you wouldn't steal a car da, 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 da. Uh, but yes <laughs> yeah we're, we're both of us are sort of experimenting with a little bit of streaming uh, to the mm. best of our abilities but like what else could we do? Not like we're busy enough yeah. as it is with our own podcasts and video stuff. We're like, but what if also streaming yeah. on top of that? So but I started off podcasting, went straight into streaming for a long time. And streaming mm. was just the only way I did things until until about a year ago. That Obviously, I've always been podcasting with you since mm. we started this. But like, um, yeah, and then YouTube sort of is now my new home. But I kind of like the liveness. I miss the liveness and the interactivity mm. of it, you know, because when we do this show... I kind of feel like it would be nice to stream this, you know, mm. like what we're doing now, because, but then I think it would get in the way a little bit when we're trying to talk and then it's like beans jokes. <laughs> <'Cause it takes laughs> up a, most of it would make the editing a lot harder because Fiona would be like, fucking hell, another fucking 10 minutes on beans. I think it's, it definitely is the the live aspect of doing these things. Are fun. It feels very social, you know, yeah. and maybe it's that sort of thing. I think, yeah, for us, I know certainly not for me like I'm very I'm very busy in a sense of me but now I'm like but if I can make screamings between the times that I yeah. can do it doesn't matter if no one turns up but they're always there and then when people do turn up I'm actually shocked I'm like oh shit oh, somebody's hello. there hello yeah exactly well welcome to me reading pdfs uh online <laughs> yeah exactly and it's figuring out a time to do it that's good because of stupid fucking time zones time zones <laughs> us like... being busy us with other commitments mm. that means we're not at our computers all that sort yeah. of thing so well i did yeah. um, what i like about youtube this is the thing that it gives you all these mm. analytics now i know when people are online like the my Ooh. viewers are on that like, tells you so i'm checking all your data people i only know when you're <laughs> online <laughs> sorry that's all it tells me and uh, all the information you've given that it, like tells you like age gender mm. location all these mm. sorts of things which is kind of it's interesting but i'm not Mm. too bothered by that but the interesting is when people are online so i'm just trying to figure out that maybe i'll just do streaming at the weekend because that seems to be the time where everyone is the most people are online on sunday afternoon so nothing else to bloody do you know you've had your sunday roast yeah watch antiques roadshow Uh, what are we talking about today, Hamilton? What is the topic? We are back to talking UA, Unearthed mm. Arcana, which is the playtest material for 1D&D, which I still think is the crappiest name ever. D&D soon. D&D yeah. future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a couple of months old, so we're coming to it, yeah, but that's fine by us. Late. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they've had quite a few playtest materials, so we know that this is probably, it's lots of tweaks are happening to it. But um, we've covered Druids and Paladins, uh, yeah. Paladins before your time, unfortunately. Druids but, uh, with 
Uh, D. D, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Famously. How are you feeling about the playtest material stuff coming out? Is there any sort of things that you're thinking of uh, instantly when you sort of get these sort of things? I think the first thing I'm like, okay, what's changed? Yeah. The first thought. Like, what have they done? Have the document up and then look at D&D Beyond. And yeah, back literally and how I've gone. That's literally most of my notes of it. And like, how much have they changed the flavor text I'm interested in? How mm. much have they just copy pasted? I think the key that I'm trying to find out through all of it is what is what is this meaning for the game moving like what are they trying to streamline what are they trying to what's the essence and the concept of the next game gonna be mm-hmm. is what i'm trying to figure out and that's kind of where i'm at what about you what's your sort of what do you kind of think of it like well what's interesting because i have read a couple of other play tests since this one mm. they definitely do oh here's a change log at the beginning of each class of what has changed from D and D Beyond as nice. well. That is so much more helpful sometimes because mm. yeah, so because when it's stuff like when it, we're doing sort of like reviews of stuff and when we're sort of critiquing it to see like oh what has changed, so I'll be like oh that sounds quite cool, and then you'll be like it's in the old class, and I'm like oh okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so I think that is quite an important sort of accessibility thing. Like change logs and erratas are always they always come out with uh, the RPG games anyway. So I think that going forward has been quite good. Um, for me, I, I, I'm i interested in Paladins particularly, because I, I do think that out of, like we've had those conversations about Druids before, uh, I still, I'm trying to uncouple that sort of uh, concept of like, oh, we're all nature and hippy dippy, which it doesn't come across at all, I will say in this uh, UA really? tour. Oh, I, I don't think it does per se, but I still I still have that hippy concept of it. And I know that's not it is. I try, I, try, I, I think it's trying to push itself away from that. I- I thought I see it. I thought it was a bit hippy dippy. Oh, okay. okay. Not in a good. I mean, I'm I like hippy dippy, so that's fine. You like as in, yeah, uh, but it's more. I think it's very new age. Oh, uh, fair. More uh, okay. crystals in <laughs> Glastonbury, sort of thing. But yeah, with paladins as well. Uh, they've had some of the, some interesting sort of uh, developments, having stuff that as usually actions going to bonus actions and stuff mm. like that. And I'm like, I think Ooh. they've become a bit more powerful. I'm a bit more. Yeah. I'm a fan of the new palette. Apart mm. from, mm. like, I don't know. I'm just a bit bored of the knight trying armor thing, which I guess you've got to make, but I feel like the paladin has evolved quite a lot mm. uh, with a lot of, and the subclasses I see for paladins out there in the world are very interesting. I think play on the theme. And I think, I think they could get more hippy dippy, if anything. Mm. Do you know what I mean? A bit more new age could be added into the paladin than, the than is already there. Because I think that there's, there's such a the simple basic form, format is, or oh, it's the, the holy night or whatever mm. but i think actually there is there's a wealth of things that could be undertaken i just see why you could see someone as a nature based paladin mm. you know like a druid style like an old faith paladin or something mm. like that I, I i think it's it's a warrior priest isn't it mm-hmm. at the end of the day and whatever that means is more than a cleric because mm. it's it's well it's a warrior of faith or whatever i can't you know some so it's sort of like um it's a bit like proxies and and uh, and the petitions, right. you know, the yeah, proxies petition. of gods and stuff. Yeah, and like how they are so dynamically different. Mm. Yeah, I think every single one of those could be a could be a paladin format, basically. Kind of mm. yeah. yeah, no, no, I see that. I see that. I think we'll, we'll go into it, but yes, yeah, so as with all UAs, they obviously they have the main overarching class, uh, sort of for the druids and paladins, and then they have an example of a subclass which you sort of rightly pointed out. It's the oath of devotion for mm-hmm. the paladin, which is basically the knight in shining shining armor. Um, like just quickly re- re- looking ahead to that. What I and we've talked about this with paladins before, but what I really love about what says so like goes home about is that each oath has these tenants and it sort of indicates like what a paladin would be like and i feel like obviously out of all the classes this sort of nails home exactly what you know if you were following this path here are the actual inspirations for it and i think it's just done such a succinctly way so like tenants of devotion they've got like honesty courage compassion honor and duty so very much like uh, these lofty ideals like haha yes i will protect the good and, and defeat mm. the evil that sort of thing from there and then for the the druid it is the it's the circle of the moon so again the the popular sort of well-known one which is uh wild shaping into different sort of forms or stronger yeah. forms so to speak so yeah makes sense that they would use those ones to sort of demonstrate what it looks like i feel like the flavor text focuses a lot on that and i think it could just be more broader and that's all i was thinking of. in the druid flavor text in the paladin oh the paladin that's okay. all no fair enough can i say that i or oh, maybe you should cut this in at the beginning okay so you could cut this in now I have a controversial opinion on the Druids. <laughs> but okay. you'll have to wait till we talk about Druids, which we're going to do after Palace. So you have to wait to the end of the episode to hear it. <laughs> 
let's look at paladins first then. So they come from the class group of priest. The primary abilities are strength mm-hmm. and charisma, because obviously they are uh, part casters as well. Ultimately, their sort of summary is that they are united by their oaths to stand against the forces of annihilation and corruption. Yeah. And yet, as you sort of mentioned, the oath is like a powerful bond. It's almost like a contract with uh, a god or a deity that I will carry out whatever your agenda is, mm-hmm. whether that be for good or ill. It doesn't matter as long as you're forwarding that stuff. And so you're being chosen as a champion, or like the god. It comes straight from the gods. Your powers of uh, of might and spell casting. I thought what was interesting. You mentioned the class group. It mm. did highlight at the beginning that a class group has no rules in itself, but prerequisites and other rules can refer to these groups. Mm. For example, only members of the mage group may be able to attune to a particular magic item, mm. which is an interesting thing that has. It, it, we used to. You always get these are the classes that can use this, but now they're mm. just gonna they're gonna be more group based. And yep. they do do that in the epic boons when we come to them here, where mm. they note epic boons that are only available to priests, for example. I think it's just maybe a mixture of saving on text space. It's not something uh, only yeah. attuned by a rogue, this, that, and the other. It's like, oh, all expert classes, all yeah. priest classes, etc. Which is, yeah, which is good, I think. Mm. I think, yeah, it makes a sense of almost streamlining it to that sense. 100%. But yeah, the life of an, a paladin is an adventuring life. Uh, when they receive the call, as you said, these blessed folk turn from their former occupations and take up arms and magic. Their loyalty is first to their sacred oaths and not to crown and country. So that's where we have a very delicious, sometimes this sort of like quandary that the paladin characters could have where they have to carry out something, but it might be against uh, what is happening straight in front of them. So there's difficult moral choices, makes yeah. for really good role play, which, which we've talked about before. There's a lot to them and there's a lot that can be a lot of fun. Like mm. And that relationship like you can have with the warlock from a role playing point of view can be really interesting and how, as you just said, the conflicts that can arise through your difference in what's in front of you and what your ultimate goal is Mm. you know because as it says your malign forces lurk in dungeons and even the smallest victory against them can tilt the cosmic balance away from oblivion and maybe that's the way you run it and you know that the greater good or whatever it is that you've got to work to and that sort of struggle can be interesting positions to put yourself in if you wish as a player uh, Mm. and as a dm which is kind of fun because obviously we we mention it every so often but like you know multi-classing as well so we've had in my D campaign the the previous one where we got to level 20 but one of the players was started out as paladin and then took some levels of warlock so obviously became a padlock or you know or a hexblade <laughs> whatever but it was it was interesting because they had for their role play not only did they have their god but also this sort of deity this fey deity that they were sort of going back and forth and sort of had very interesting role play like who do you serve more and like does it matter how many more how did that work it was really interesting in terms of role play and like certainly early on we uh the person the player had choices about like you could take another if you take another level in warlock then there might be some consequences for the deity and back and forth uh if you took if you didn't take your paladin level etc so very it was very interesting so again you can have a lot of fun with those sort of like like you yeah. said there's all uh, two sides of the same coin almost hmm. in a way what did you think the key changes were for the for the paladin then? So I think the first one that I sort of noticed, again, just looking at the paladin class features, mm-hmm. was that it's it's a little bit more refined in the lay on hand stuff. Obviously, most of that is still yeah. the same. You know, you have a little pool of reserve. It's just this little inner magic thing where you can touch someone and you can give expend the same point for point, making sure that they heal up, expending the pool, etc. But like at the bottom, it says you can expend five hit points from the pool, healing to remove the poison condition from a creature. That's changed because it used to be any disease or a disease of some mm. sort. So it was very vague what that would be. So I think having it defined a little bit now, that that's yeah. quite good. And then obviously later on, uh, it expands to be like these conditions as well. Restoring touch. That's it, restoring touch at 15th level. So yeah, so you can remove one of the following conditions, blinded, charmed, dazed, defeated, oh, defeated, deafened, deafened. <laughs> <laughs> deafened frightened paralyzed or stunned that's really cool i think that'd be a great addition in combat and i think that's because again like what it, you know if you, it was still diseased it's like what does that mean like is it you know like it feels like a role play thing rather than maybe something in combat so i think that's a really good use and that's a really good yeah. upgrade just to clarify what you can do with it yeah like your spellcast has been dazed they're not gonna be able to have a turn screw it i'm gonna use uh is it bonus action i think it is bonus action isn't it Lay on hands. Lay on hands uh, is a magic action, Which so is it is is a main action. Main action should be a bonus action. 
Healing should all be bonus actions. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should be healed easily and quickly. So yeah, so you can just choose to take your turn to to allow your mage to do fireball or whatever you need to do. <laughs> That's what they do, right? That's all they do. <laughs> uh, obviously, they've got spell casting and divine smite. Obviously, they're famous for that divine smite, mm -hmm. which essentially, just in case you don't know, immediately after you hit a target with an attack roll using a weapon or an unarmed strike. I know. <laughs> smite. The hand of, of one of the days, he's one of the gods, just like Maradona. Take that. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> the hand of God. So, yes, you can expend one spell slot to deal radiant damage to a target. This is 2d8 for level one spell slot, and yeah. then it goes up by 1d8 uh, higher than first. Uh, you can use it no more than once per turn, and you can't use it on the same turn you cast the spell. Like, yeah. Obviously, that's fine. Before, I don't believe you could do it with a, an armed strike, which is fucking no. cool. Very, very cool. Yeah. I want to be a monk paladin. And also, I would assume, just looking at this, it's an attack roll using a weapon. I can't remember the last time if it was a melee weapon or not, but it means a ranged weapon, probably, with... Uh, yeah. Right? So, like, if you were using a bow and arrow, or I think I saw some comments on the video saying, like, they could have pistols or firearms shooting, like, divine smite through bullets, perhaps. Divine gunslinger. Get a Hellraiser-type... Uh, not yeah. Hellraiser. Well, Hellboy. Constantine. Ke oh, Const well, Hellboy and Constantine. I, I mixed two things and created yeah. the horror one instead, so that yeah. was not... No, not that film. <laughs> Divine Smite, um, I think is a it's it was pretty hardcore anyway. But yeah. I think because they've taken there's some bits with like I don't know if you remember or not. There's something with the undead conditions and stuff like that. They're changing that slightly, so maybe they won't be as affected by yeah. divine damage. So this feels like a I think a good. I think that it's like fuck it. You could anytime you attack, essentially. I think that's the right move, and I think having it as something that is ranged is really cool. I think using a, a bow, it, it just <laughs> flexibility of giving more flexibility to gameplay choices to make the game more in a simplified way as well as is, is really a positive. I think always. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that your paladin isn't always at the front of the battle, engaged if they could be further behind. Uh, I don't know, like a harpoon or a, or a mm. a pike or, or or yeah, whatever they throw. Uh, javelins i'm just yeah. throwing javelins at hamilton right now and i was like no what's the word for it no oh he's caught them all amazing <laughs> I, I think they got it before extra attack at fifth level but i think it's something that i find as a player that mm. it, the it, this is why i always like to start fifth level <laughs> for things because extra attack just makes the game much more fun that you have a chance to do things twice i think and um that's why i love rogues because you get a million times to do anything and options to do it but i think yeah it's good i feel like they should be able to i think you could they could have upped it like you get three attacks don't you as a uh fighter I yes believe. yes and i do feel that potentially you could push that on a on a paladin as well because even though they've mm -hmm. got and maybe you could limit it the amount of radiant well you have to use a spell slot so i i don't know but maybe you couldn't use your smite on it or something like that or you could do an offhand attack or something like that i don't know it would be kind of interesting but mm, i agree and so then we come to channel divinity so this is the thing that's mm. sort of changed quite a bit mm. so before uh this channel divinity is basically it's like a catch-all term and it's actually happening with all quite a lot of the other classes which is like if you have a set number of things that your class does yeah. it you Used to be tied to the proficiency bonus and then earlier on in this particular document it goes we realize that is too powerful yeah. <laughs> so it's now just going to be a set number of times and it's per level isn't it per level yes exactly yeah. so now what they've done is so they made divine sense as part of your channel divinity so that is it is one use of it and it is a bonus action now where again most people will know what divine sense is but in case you don't it's your awareness to detect celestials fiends and undead you know the location of any of those creatures within 60 feet of you and you know that it's creature type within in the same radius, you can also detect the presence of any place or object that has been consecrated or desecrated, as with the Hallow spell. Which, let me tell you, it has come up quite a bit in Curse of Strahd, where they've gone, where are the vampires and where's the holy relic, you know? Uh, and I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you. Being a paladin in Curse of Strahd is a very useful... Mm -hmm. That's why I chose it when I first did Curse of Strahd. Like, I'm being a paladin because... Yeah. I'm going to be fighting undead, I think. So, you know, we had a cleric and a paladin. You're like, yeah, I think we're sorted, to be honest. 
I also, when we come to Druids, they call it channel nature now, don't they? Which is yes. basically they're taking this channel divinity ideology and pushing it throughout all the priesthoods. Yeah, because before it was just like, here's your number of wild shapes. Mm. They now change it to be like, uh, yeah, a channel nature, which you could do wild shape through, but also yes. uh, you could do other things through as well, depending on your subclass. Again, which makes multi-classing and understanding mm. different classes so much more streamlined. Absolutely. I'm a fan of individuality. So I think if you wanted to make it all different, totally fine. But it seems like this is the way they're going is about streamlining simplification mm. to make it open for everyone to apply onto them that like have yeah. a base set of rules that then individuality comes from a one by one box rather than yeah. 20 different shaped boxes i think it's nicer because in some of the subclasses for druids i know i appreciate when we're looking at paladins just now a lot of them were like well you don't use wild shape to turn into uh, an animal transform into yeah. an animal you use them for something else yes. and so it just felt then oh but well, you have to shape. yeah, yeah. you have to use wild shape for you know so it's almost like a misnomer like you, you know you yeah. don't have to do anything like that at all so now it's like well let's just make it like you said completely clear that it's just yeah. one use of your channel uh nature rather than like you must wild shape into a cat but also once you do that uh sports appear you know some you know wh whatever it is for those different channel natures that are in the other subclasses so yeah i completely agree it's just a nice way to easily go this is like the umbrella mm. term and here's one use of it so to speak yeah I'm happy for the, these changes, particularly yeah. with it as the other things they've been doing with that, which we uh, we come on to it more in in Druid again. But it's the mm -hmm. the use of uh, the the change, like the way they've done the upgrades to the the wild shape you were talking about, mm -hmm. which reminds me. Uh, so the uh, aquatic aerial form uh, and might of the land forms the different forms that give you more uh, options to it. Mm -hmm. that it was similar to and it's gone right out of my head ranger mm. with the the beast um a master beast master where you get the different levels of availability to you with a basic stat block that mm -hmm. you then can can then apply your own sort of flavor to and mm -hmm. I, so it's another thing that kind of similar sort of design concept happening there which mm -hmm. again I'm, I'm, a, I'm actually a bit of a fan of yeah <laughs> Something that they've added for level five is this faithful steed, which yeah. I quite like as a little flavoursome thing. So you can easily call on the aid of an otherworldly steed. You always have the fine steed spell prepared, and it doesn't count against the number of spells you can prepare. Casting time is an action. You can cast this spell once without expending a spell slot, and then you will gain the ability when you do so when you finish a long rest. It's always quite fun, I think that, yeah. and it kind of makes sense that you would have some way, if as a as a knight, as a maybe as just to get it. I don't know. It just, I think for me, it fits the image of Paladin that you would have that there. But again, maybe, I don't know, maybe I would change it to be like find familiar instead if, if the players wanted yeah. that. You know, just again, you can change it to be something that is a suitable flavor spell, you know? You want Fine Steed because it's got better, it's got better stats. <laughs> yeah, of course you do. Of course you do. I like the Fine Steed points though, the sort of stat block for it, mm. the otherworldly steed. So your armor class is 10 plus one plus the spell level. So. Mm -hmm. That I don't know how that kind of works because it's always got it cast, but it doesn't. Use, it does use a spell slot, does it? It does, doesn't it? Uh, doesn't. It says uh, it doesn't count against the number of spells. Uh, when you cast a spell, the casting time is an action. You can also cast a spell once without expending a spell slot. So, yeah, what, so I, guess, I guess you could say I'm doing this at ninth. Uh, yes. Let's see. I, sure. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so that means I can get 19 AC, which mm. also means I can get 10 per spell level. So five plus 90, so 95 hit points. You know, if you did it at ninth level, obviously you have to have access to a ninth level spell. But... I was going to say you probably have to, yeah. But yeah, even if you go fifth level spell, that's it's fifth an AC of fifteen, fifty five hit points. It gains, it has telepathy for one mile between you and the seed, which is cool. Mm. But when you get hit points from a spell of first level or higher, it gains the same number of hit points if within five feet of it. So mm. that's kind of nice. And then yeah. it has a melee spell attack of otherworldly maul, mm. and it can do bonus actions of fey step, fey only. So I guess you have to choose if it's Fey, Fiend, or Celestial, yeah. which means uh, Fey Step, it teleports uh, along with its rider to an Onyx Place at once after a long rest. Mm -hmm. I always think you should just be able to do that all the time. <laughs> just jump around the mat. Uh, it's one of those things that just, well, you should, I think, like Gambit. Uh, Gambit? Is that who I mean? No, I mean... Um, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Right, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was like, same ballpark, slightly yeah. different. Both having cool outfits. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the steed's eyes gleam with fiendish light as it targets one creature it can perceive. The target receive a wisdom saving throw 
or be frightened or healing touch if you go celestial. If the mm. steed touches another creature, you get 2d8 plus the spell's level. Mm. I like the idea of just this horse coming up and going, <laughs> like that. Ah, yeah, like, long, horrible tone. Just a yeah. long slick oh, of someone's wow. face, like, thanks. <laughs> That's 2d8 plus 5. I feel so good inside. <laughs> so, anyway, there you go. Um, oh, very quite cool. fun. Uh, stuff that we've seen before, we've got. Uh, Aura of Protection, which used to be level 6, is now level 7. And then later on, there's Aura of Courage, which is mm-hmm. uh, was level 10, it's now level 13. And these are quite cool, again, from playing with a Paladin. It's the idea that they have an aura around them, which will add to uh, basically saving throws, which is very yeah. important. Oh my god, and you're like, yeah. am I within 30 feet of so-and-so? Great, I get a plus mm. 4 to this roll. And you can sometimes it's like you're immune from certain conditions as well. Yeah, yeah Frightened one is the Courage one. One. and then or expansion level 17 that's when it goes to 30 feet instead of 10 yeah really cool i really like that that's a proper uh yeah. help your allies in, in battle kind of one really like that one you're a buffer aren't you basically i'm a buffer i'm gonna say classic same story every time we get to uh any of these classes mm-hmm. i don't know what happens to wizards of the coast but they get to the 18th level and they just they just go i don't know what to do and fall over and they just like fall on the floor on a I, panic don't they divine conduit I know. Channel divinity when you roll initiative. Regain one use of it, yeah. I'm sorry, you're level 18. That should be... You get... Divine smite becomes ultimate smite to the world. You smite and it does... You can either make it... Unlimited smites. Well, no, but you hit someone and then it does, like, electric shocks off to four... Like, a number of characters equal to your level. And I know that's too many, but, you know, like to three other characters or any character within 15 feet or five feet of that of mm-hmm. the person you smite takes half damage or something from your smite because it's so <laughs> smitey or like you can fly <laughs> you're powered by your faith and your god's champion power flows through you you can either do three things one is you can put your smite and it goes to three people or you could double your smite roll or if you're against uh, ultimate boss sort of character, like as in like a feigned or something like that, like they used to have the plus one d8, but if you choose your, I don't know, or you you create um like a f- hunter's mark sort of thing, mm. if you did like a a, a, a smiting a, a a warding smite or something like that, or a, a marking smite, you can smite this character with double points or something like that throughout but you can only do that choose one per day, so it's like yeah. I'm in the boss battle, I'm gonna say Vecna. You are smited forever, and it's like I don't know, like a hunter's mark type thing. That's what I mean. Yeah, mark, like, like yeah, like that. Well, it feels, uh, I guess, like the, like a new feature that's coming like at ninth level is abjure foes, yeah, which is another use of child ability, which is overwhelming foes with awe. So like, yeah. it could be a similar flavorsome to that yes. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, like a marking smite or something like that, or you just sort of like target smite, or what's the other term? Were they using your quarry? Like, yes, know, quarry, quarry yeah. or something mm. like that. All I'm saying is, wizards, take those, use them. Take those notes. Looking back at the structure level for the old fifth edition one, there doesn't yeah. get it does not there's not brilliant stuff. You like you get no. obviously oath features of your subclass, fine, 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 um, aura improvements. Like one that they've got rid of, which is called cleansing touch, which sa- it sounds rubbish. Uh, I'll read it out to you. At beginning of 14th level, you can use your action to end one spell on yourself or another willing creature that you touch. This feature can be used a number of times equal to your charisma modifier, and you regain the expended use when you finish your long rest. So that has happened before. We've used it once or twice, but usually you'd be... I feel like the paladin is... is I feel like, firstly, I don't know, would that be a bonus action? Just to make that just like... Because I feel like at 14th level, you're like... You know, you just like take a deep breath in, end it, and then you go, and now to fight. Yeah, having, because I guess you can use your action and then go use an attack action because you have two attack, two actions, right? But oh no, you don't have two actions. You have two attacks when you use the attack action. Oh right, right, right. Yes, that's right, that's right. So, but that's the thing. Give you two actions. I, it's re- I just think level twenty, you should be at least at level eighteen. But coming up to level twenty, I do not know why you can't put a smite in the ground doesn't even have to hit and it pushes out an aura of smite or Ooh. or like a healing word like you you instead oh. of smiting you you can just you you do something cool 
Like mm. your lay on hands is like you, it becomes your aura, whatever your aura size is becomes your lay on hands and you mm. lay your hands on the ground and everyone yeah. within 30 feet gains that number of hit points that you've got in your lay on hands pool. Or if you use five of those, everyone in that aura gets, because they have that holy nimbus we will get to at level 14 in the mm. Oath of Devotion, mm. whenever, which you can imbue your aura of protection with holy power for a minute. You can either, if an enemy starts, they take radiant damage equal to your provisioning bonus, or you always fill with a bright light that is sunlight. Well, why can't that just be you fill it with healing energy, and anyone mm. who starts in that gains uh, equal to radiant your like, take Cho- like choose choose it either or yeah. healing or damage. Yeah, yes. they, they, yeah, they definitely have that. There's um another spell. Is it spite of protection? There's spite of protection, which is in there, which is. Your radiates protection that allows you and your allies to stay in the fight. Whenever you use your divine smite, choose the ally within 30 feet and they gain temporary hit points equal to 1d8 plus the level of the spell. So they could do that for the smite. Why can't you do that for the holy nimbus? It feels like, mm. I don't know, that's all. Because also the aura of de- is, if they're in your aura of protection for the aura of devotion, if they enter the aura, the condition, the charmed condition, they just suppress it whilst they're there. Yeah, I feel it should be once you're in the aura, you lose it. Not like, oh, I'm now going out. Oh, I'm charmed. I, they have changed that. I remember that from the most oh. recent play. That that is now it ends. Okay, because I, I was yeah. thinking that's a bit like oh, I'm gonna. I don't want to move over here because then you're just gonna be like, oh. Sorry, I was confusing myself because I thought holy nimbus, yeah, having that same healing or oh, possible healing thing. Actually, I'm thinking of druids. They have something early yeah. on called nature's aid, which is very much like the healing spirit spell, mm. which we which we'll come back to when we look at druids properly. But I'm just like. That's what I was talking about. Um, but yeah, just to finish off, um, looking further ahead uh, on the actual class before going to the subclass, the epic boon is rubbish, as we've talked, we've talked about before. Like you just get get true sight at sixty feet at level twenty, plus an increase in one of your ability modifiers. True sight is pretty good, though. It's a pretty cool. It is, but I feel like by this point you will have items that will do that for you, yeah. or you'll have a spell. It's not a level 20 feature, <laughs> that's no. for sure, but it is cool. Yeah, the only thing I had sort of yeah. last to say on this, so obviously, as we sort of said, that was sort of the overall view of the mm. Paladin class. And over Devotion, we sort of said it bounds a Paladin to the lofty ideals of justice and order. So again, that's full knight and shiny armor ideal. Sacred weapon is slightly different, I believe. As a bonus action, you can spend one use of a channel divinity to imbue mm. a simple or martial weapon you're holding with positive energy. Uh, you add a charisma modifier to the attack rolls you make with that weapon, and each time you hit it, you cause to deal its normal damage or radiant damage. I mm. feel, again, this is where I've not looked it up properly, that you it used to be like you would roll an extra d8 mm. or something like that. Because I feel like also there's a sacred weapon and not spiritual weapon, which is, is one I always confuse it yeah. for. And that's when you have like a magical weapon that's yes. encircling you and stuff. But it's only a bonus action, which is quite nice. I think that's great. I think that's really good. And just adding that, like, I'm going to smite. I've got sacred weapon. I'm stacking is what you want. Stacking things. We've got smite of protection at level six, where it now radiates protective energy that allows you and your allies to stay uh, in the fight. So whenever you use your divine smite, you choose an ally or yourself within 30 feet. And that chosen creature gets temporary hit points equal to 1d8 plus the level of the spell slot used for the divine smite. So that's great. I don't think you could do that before. That's a. I think that's a really mm. cool way to like buff up someone like you're in the middle of battle, yeah. someone's about to fall, and they just get that little hit before they leave. And then you've got the aura of devotion, which means they're immune to the charmed effect, which is, I, that's the one I've benefited from. I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, really useful. It is really useful. What's your thinking overall then? Judging from... I've got got it up here, the paladin table. Like obviously they've shifted a few things around. Like Divine Sense has obviously moved to third level. It is now mm. part of this channel divinity stuff, which I quite like. Um, again, for that sort of ease of stuff. It feels better, I think. Yeah. Uh, I overall. actually agree. I think it is possibly better. Just need to fix level 20. Yeah. It's tricky because I think you and I tend, I mean, I've obviously played later level stuff, but I don't think many people play test later level stuff like deliberately. It's all as as we've said before. All the published adventures are always like, well, levels one to ten or five to twelve. You know, well, I've run adventures when we've done the Dragon Steel specials. We've gone all the way up to everyone gets to level twenty for the last one, and it's just some of them really. A wizard is a bloody god. A sorcerer yeah, is a, a druid bloody god. is a Druids god. Can be real gods, and then you. Uh, a, a rogue is a god at 10th level so like you know it's just difficult for everyone else who mm-hmm. just who just stands there like 
warlocks aren't as much but they're kind of close i think but i think it just feels like you can give melee fighting based mm. people the ability to just be amazing and a paladin is already built for that i just find yeah. it, it smiting is incredible and it is great i just think you could just allow them to break the game uh, to a certain like it doesn't break yeah. it necessarily I, it, even then you know when you're fighting people like fechner mm. when you look at well, i'm thinking of that critical role Mm. One, when they're fighting Vector and there are seven characters fighting uh, seven seven and then some extra people who come in yeah. and then leave and Thordak even they had the same and yeah. you just and you think they struggled and they yeah. were going down and I don't think having having a paladin in there that could do extra damage to one person would be a, would be like that much, an extra attack or something like that would be a big mm. problem or would unbalance that sort of game because that's what you're fighting you're fighting deities at that level so yeah. again from a quick look and maybe you'll be able to tell me otherwise it doesn't seem to be any much that affects groups of yeah characters like damaging wise they yeah. have their abjure foes which is like overwhelm foes so you can pick as yeah. a number of people in your charisma order, and then if they fail they're dazed yeah aoe is very buff and nerf, not very much uh, damage based, is yes. it? So, which yeah. I guess, I guess, cool, but it would be. I like. I can't can imagine like a, a paladin going and just swinging and then just people just yeah. falling, like you know, like mowing down. Yeah, you, know? you want a, a whirlwind or like a chuck the blade into the ground thing comes out of yeah, the ground big like wet, wet thunder wave type thing yeah, yeah exactly it mm. just feels i mean there are spells and again there are like blinding smite and vanishing spite smite mm. and staggering smite all do different things so there are spells for it mm -hmm. i don't know if there is one that does that sort of that effect off the top of my head i'd be interested to see the other channel divinities in the mm. other subclasses because we've only got yeah. a couple of examples here obviously of like divine sense yeah. um like we don't have turn creature yeah. you know uh which i know they were sort of removing anyway so i wonder if that's going to come elsewhere mm. perhaps well let's have a look at druids then yeah. so looking at the flavor text for that so they belong to the ancient orders that call upon the forces of nature uh, revering nature above all individual druids gain their magic from a, a nature deity from nature itself or both and they typically unite with other druids in performing rites to mark the passage of the seasons and other natural cycles so they master primal magic, which is uh, oriented towards nature and animals. And this idea of like nature exists in a precarious balance, uh, air, earth, wind and fire. I think what would be really interesting is that this is what makes me, it's, it's given me an idea for a subclass, which mm -hmm. is making elemental druids based on the quasi-demi, quasi-elementals, like mm -hmm. the, like a druid ash druid or a smoke druid or yeah. a ooze druid uh was it mist was that the other one that was another quasi uh, steam is steam it's called steam, steam. Yeah, yeah steam you do have mist which is when you get the negative energy plane so negative and positive energy plane ones and using all of the elemental planes so you do get so when you get steam so you get the demi planes then you get the quasi quattral ones which is when you add the radiance in mm. the, you get the different sides of it so there's steam and and mist there's ash and fog so, like, I just think you could take every single one of those uh, mm -hmm. as, like, a booklet and make a whole booklet of all the quasi-elementals. Uh, yeah. I think would be quite a fun one to look at. I can, I can imagine, like, you make, like, it's just because I'm thinking about it just now for a, another stream, but, like, Troika, mm. like, if you roll a, a D66 uh, and it'd be like, oh, your element is this. And, like, you could even go to, prof I guess maybe this is too scientific, but go on the elemental table and go, ah, oh, you're neon. Yeah. <laughs> Well, one of them is mineral. Like minerals, a great mm -hmm. one. So, like mineral or uh, yeah, Gases. and then rock, <laughs> rock, and yeah, ooze and magma. You know, all those mm -hmm. kind of magma druid would be kind of cool. So that that'd be quite cool for flavor some stuff. But yeah, again, I know that they they do the whole thing. Like let's just let's just keep it to the four elements, just to boil. Oh it yeah, down. no, of course. I just think this is a fun little some you know DM skill sort of thing. Uh, yeah, always uh, subclasses galore, right? <laughs> So I hear you've got a controversial opinion <laughs> <laughs> about this. It's druids. really not that controversial. What? You made them listen to all our guff about paladins and then we get there and you're like... It's, nice. it's contrary to my original opinion, which is Ooh. I thought a bloody love wild shape as it is, why are they going to bloody ruin it? Mm. I actually don't think they've ruined it. I think they've made it better. A hundred percent they've made it better. 
they've actually fixed it. And I've like, uh, that's my controversial opinion because I think a lot of people have said that they didn't like it the way it changed, Mm -hmm. but I actually think it's good. Mm. And I will talk about why, but that is my opinion on uh, my, my contrary to my original opinion when I first read this was like, ah, they fucked it. You know, they got rid of it. This channel H has ruined it. But then, yeah, no, I think it got actually really, really good. So, Mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is the hit points thing. Yes. Because before, oh, we can talk about it there. We can talk about it now. Let's talk about it now. Because, yeah, because obviously, so uh, most people will have heard Druids, they had this wild shape ability in the previous one where they could shift into any animal they had seen. And so before that meant, oh, here's a whole load of uh, stat blocks you could use, etc. And now what they've done, they've streamlined it into animal of the land, animal of the sea, and animal of the sky. Mm. These different forms, which you can flavor however you want, but more importantly, that obviously, like like in world shape, you keep your same stats bar a couple of them depending on what shape you picked, and then you get like a generic uh, sort of stat mm. block which you can then use to help you in exactly. battles. Yeah. But the thing was, I was annoyed at first. I was like, "Oh, it's great that you can then take. I'm going to be a giant owl bear, and I'm going to have 365 hit points on top of my initial hit points," which I think. I was like, they've got rid of that. That is so shit. Mm -hmm. Because that was part of the fun, right? The part Mm -hmm. of the fun was I'm going to, I can add all these hit points. And then when I'm down, I've still got all these hit points. How cool is that? But then I was thinking, oh, how shit is it is when you turn into a rabbit and you get it for about a second and then you've wasted your wild shape. And that's when I was like, oh, actually, that's why it's so much more fun because I can be a goldfish for an hour (laughs) or as long as I need to be. Yeah. Or you can stay in your form as long as you actually need to be. So like I need this thing to because I want to be able to climb this uh cliff. Mm. And you'd like, oh I'm gonna turn into uh, a monkey, right? But the monkey stats got 10 hit points and you fall and you're done. You're like, oh fuck. Right? You know, you you make a mistake on your climbing check or whatever. But now Mm. it's like, oh I've got all my hit points. It's yeah. the same as me. I just gain the benefits of the actual yes. qualities of the bee. So, okay, maybe it makes it so you haven't got that ability to gain shit tons of hit points. But really, that only comes at really high levels. I'm going to say, yeah, when you're when you're when it had that before, like the type of like here's all the CR ratings yeah. you get to. Literally, it'll be later on where oh, mm. I'm I'm being. X yeah. creature, which even then you'd be like, oh, I'll just polymorph or something like that. Yeah, you know, like exactly. it's, yeah, it's it's a very minor number of creatures that it would affect. Yeah. And so that's why I felt actually that was my controversial main opinion is that I actually think that element of it means that you can be these ele- these creatures as long as the spell lasts, which I, I think now is quite a long time. Looking at it now, like, yeah, like the armor class is still, well, it's 10 plus your wisdom score. Mm-hmm. So it's not like your new armor class is what the creature is, etc. Oh yeah, half your druid level in hours. So if you're level 20, that's 10 hours. 10 hours. You do your animorphs uh, mm. uh, playthrough, essentially. Yeah, exactly. And I th- so I think that I just, yeah, that was my overall first thing on the druid was like, yes. Mm. Actually, I've thought about it and I retract my original comments. Wow. Whoa. So, yeah, so like I said, they've now changed it to it's no longer just wild shape as an overall term. It is yep. now channel nature. And one of those examples is wild shape, as we said. So, yep, as an action, you can transform yourself into a form that you've learned for the feature. You start by knowing one form, which is an animal of the land. And then you unlock parts of that later on at level five. So you'd be able to climb, do multi attack, which is great. And then you learn uh, of the sea later on. And then finally of the sky. I think the only thing I'd say, and I think it's very small, really, because I feel like you're you're probably transforming into these animals probably as you said to do something like oh i need to climb or i need to fly or something like Mm. that you're probably not going to attack as much i do feel though like uh say for example with the bestial strike of animal of the sky it's only a d4 plus your wisdom modifier which is i feel a bit low for when you get that form unlocked. yeah it's the only thing i'd say i think i would just do a straight d6 across all of them or maybe even a d8 across all of them I don't know. Like just, like, just to that? give them Sorry, something on the, on the attack. <laughs> on the yeah, uh, mul- there's multi attack, uh, yeah. and then it's bestial strike. Yeah, and I was got. I thought, yeah, I totally agree. I think just just a little bit of because like I, again, I, maybe it's because like oh, maybe that's another thing why people didn't like. It. It's like oh, I couldn't use all their different moves, and I don't get like a plus. 
10 to hit or something like that but i feel like i don't mind that too much it's more i think the damage i think that's the more important thing like 1d8 would have been great for all of them just i think 1d8 just make it like that because that's that's a fun die you know it's not too much it just doesn't make them very good though for actually being in combat as right much, so i would is... assume you'd use it as a role-playing thing that like yeah. you're trying to get away in a chase or something like that so i hope there will be a subclass that affects that to make it a much more combat heavy one because i think yeah because i think about think about land animal of the sea as well obviously they get swim speed so it's more likely they'll be mm. good better in water but they've only get like a i mean they get a d6 as well for their whatever their strike is so it's just like yeah okay what's your modifier max what five probably yeah so i mean 11 damage each time for, for and they all get multi attack as well so it's not yeah. it's like it's not the end of the world but i just feel like i would i would like to have everything on a d8 i think just if you're it. in a combat at level 20 you're basically not going to wild shape well that's it isn't it like I, and i think that was the reason why I mean, you can still spell cast can't you but you can you can at level 20 but obviously yeah. before then you can't cast any spells you can keep concentration on spells but yeah. you can cast any and then you can unlock it later Whilst on, if you're an elemental, which we do get onto, you, you're doing yes. some serious damage and stuff like that. Well, that's it. I think with that, yeah, so it adds to it, like, or you can mm. change it to be elemental damage and add mm. stuff on top of that. In terms of just looking at the general class, again, before we go on to uh, the subclass of the Circle of the yeah. Moon. Oh, one thing, we missed no metal restriction on armor or shields. Anymore. Yes, finally, that's finally been yeah. removed. So that's quite good. So this is what I was talking about, this uh, second second level, Nature's Aid. So you learn two mm. more ways to use your channel nature, Healing Blossoms and Wild Companion, each as described below. So Healing Blossoms, as a magic action, so full action, you channel healing energy that appears as blooming flowers. Choose a point within 30 feet of yourself and spectral flowers will appear in the moment for uh, for a moment for t uh, in a 10 foot radius sphere centered on a point then roll a number of d4s equal to was a modifier and add the dice together the total is the number of hit points you can distribute to car uh, creatures in that sphere you decide the number of hit points that are restored to each of those creatures uh, and deducting the healing from the total so it's a bit of lay on hands but also healing spirits i like well. it i said i like this really cool i really i love that um like if a uh, healing spirit is an interesting spell in general where people have like broken it slightly because it's just going to be there for like round of the round every people can step it step in and out and they get more healing this is like a very basic version of that where you just get it for a second and then you, you can just yeah mass heal in this sphere love that yeah, i think I it's really it. cool no, i really love it five familiar great we talked a bit about that last in the paladin so i, I think that's yeah yeah the wild the wild companion stuff so yeah so and that is i think that is yeah it has to be fey and disappears when you finish a long rest but it's always with you so that's quite nice one thing i didn't realize i just think it's quite cool so at level 11 you get tiny critter so you gain the ability to to become a tiny creature of whatever you transform mm, into. I like that. I hadn't really thought of that before. I kind of just assumed you you could do that. But that, it, what does that entail? So like you could become, I don't know, a fly or a yeah. moth or something like that. I was thinking, but I was like, oh, maybe a tiny elephant. Like you, know? yes, you can do that if you want to. An elephant pony. It's like what's what's nipping at my ankle? <laughs> <laughs> the face that Fiona did there was classic. Thank um, you. I love alternating forms. I think that's great. It's, it's switching between them just like in the movie. Yeah, you switch between your normal form as a bonus action and you can then switch back to the wild shape within the next minute as a bonus action and neither of them uh, expends the use of a wild shape. So yeah, very much like that movie. So all those people with their, with their well, actually glasses, yeah. fuck them. Basically. Well, I think that's also great if it's like when we're talking about in combat, I want to be in this form because I want to fly, but you could be like flying, bonus action, Pew, pew, pew. Back to your, you know, I'll fall 10 feet uh, in that. No, you fall 10 feet, but then bonus action, you're beginning your turn. I'm back in. I'm flying. Sort yeah. Of thing, it's a very, I mean? yeah, I like that as a bonus action. So you're not wasting your action to yeah. do stuff. So yeah, that is very, very cool, I think. Mm. Then we've got a wild resurgence like uh, where primal magic uh, radiates from you, allowing you to use healing blossoms as part of the same use of channel nature, which is great. I just said what I put on my notes here would like to see variations or options on this. Like, mm. what, like, not just add healing blossoms, but maybe add something else uh, as a, a resurgence. Like mm. you do your wild shape. I'm sure it could be a subclass feature that you could people could play on. Oh yeah, like something else within it. Elemental resurgence or something like that. So mm. or anything along those lines would be quite cool. And then yeah, as soon as we get to sort of level 17, that's when things start to to go downhill. I mean, it says you can cast any spells in wild shape form. That makes sense. And then it's like Arch Druid. Whenever you roll initiative, you gain one use of your channel nature. I wrote bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Unlimit. 
unlimited. Make it unlimited. Old one is better. Mm-hmm. And then the epic boon at Not the end. Good enough. No, I don't like the epic boon at all. So epic boon of spell recall. You have to roll the dice. I know. And if you don't get the right number, well, what a waste of fucking time that was. was it? it is a D. It's a D six, right? Yeah. It? Yeah. So you roll a D six after you expend whatever level slot, and if the number matches whatever spell slot you've uh, used. So if say you rolled a four and you used a four, you don't lose that spell slot. It's a bit like one in on. six chance at level twenty. You get a one in six chance. I've- I'd even of... flip a, I'd flip a coin myself, but even I then, don't I'd... think then. I think you just don't expend anything below six because it's it's a it's you're a bloody arch. Sorry, I was I was wrong. It's a one d four. So okay. first, second, third, and fourth level. Yeah. So, so at, that, at level twenty, fourth level spells should cost you no spell slots. Simple as that. Because yeah. why does it matter? You're going to have how many? Uh, too many. <laughs> four, four, three, three, and three. Mm-hmm. Just. That's a lot of spells. Just say once you get to level twenty, you just can you can just shoot out fourth levels up to fourth level spells for nothing. I feel like they're just like, oh, you're gonna fuck everything else up for the DM. But the DM can easily just go right. I'm gonna add another Taraskin. Just like, but it's just fourth level spell. I mean, you're not even if it, you're not gonna get that's four, five, uh, four, so four, eight, uh, and then three threes, which is nine. So we're talking seventeen spells. Uh, seventeen mm-hmm. rounds of combat of. You're not going to have more than 17 rounds of combat. No. So why bother? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just let them cantrip up to fourth level spells because all that's doing is just allowing them to be more diverse, do a lot more action, more interesting spells throughout the game. Yeah. It really isn't going to break and they could be much more there healing, helping people out. Mm-hmm. Grumble, grumble, grumbles. Grumble, grumbles, grumbles. Uh, grumble, grumble. I think we need to make merch with that on, with yeah. our faces, with, with yeah. those with those slugs. Yeah. From, like, uh... I'll do it. I'll do some, I'll draw over them, make a drawing version of it, and I'll go grumble, grumble, grumble grumbles. So, Circle of the Moon subclass, uh, in case you didn't know, they draw on the magic of the moon to transform themselves and to guard the wilds. Mm. So, it's changeable as the moon. This, uh, a druid of this circle can make prowl as a great cat. One night, soar over the treetops as an eagle the next day and crash through the undergrowth as in bear form to drive off a trespassing monster. Again, very cool, flavoursome stuff there. Level three, combat wild shape. Whilst you're in wild shape, you can cast any spell you currently have prepared from the abjuration school, providing that doesn't uh, require a, a component. Abjuration, like why? I know it's just like say, warding only, only warding, not yeah. attacking, which is a yeah. little bit. Just make I mean, awful. but you can use unarmed strike as a bonus action. That's great. So you, if you've got, by the time you get to level five, mm. so you've got multi-attack and then you can bonus action another attack on top of that. That I like. You can then use your wild shape as a bonus action or a magic action, but no more than once per turn. So you get that uh, in and out thing mm. a little bit quicker, but obviously it expends your wild shape first. But yes, elemental wild shape, very cool. Whenever you assume a wild shape form, choose one of the following damage types, so acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder. Whilst in that form, you have resistance to the chosen damage type, and the form's bestial strike deals damage of that type rather than the normal type. And then it gives you examples that you can like, flavor the rest of the world. But all I could think of, Hamilton, is all the different EV forms that you could be like Flaricon, uh, Vaporeon, all that sort of thing. Oh, you know? Right, yeah, I see what you mean. Have, yeah. that, have that sort of thing on that. I don't topic. know why they didn't give you a D4 or a D6 of mm. it. Just give me one D6 of that on top of it I'm, yeah I'm, an additional extra on it because yeah if, especially is... if, you, if you do slash then it's like piercing damage and then i don't know a bit of fire would be good yeah exactly I don't know. but then it goes then it level does. 10 yeah then it does but it doesn't give you it for four levels you think you should just get it straight away i don't know but yeah so level 10 elemental strike elemental forces imbue your action so you take an extra d6 damage of the type you chose from your elemental wild shape 2d6 at 17 17 make it make it 3d6 like make okay it. More d six per spell level that you want to use when you're change when you're yeah. using just your stuff. if you want to imbue a spell slot gain one d six baseline mm-hmm. or plus one one d six plus one d six per spell slot you can imbue this with would be great because then it's yeah like, you yeah using up your spell slots to make it more powerful almost yeah. like a divine smite type which, thing which kind of undoes the fact that you can't use spells in that means you're not giving people fireball as a as a cat but ah, you're yet cool. letting them use that. It makes it more combat heavy. Otherwise, you're just not gonna. I just I can't see people mm-hmm. uh, at higher levels being wild shaped. Yeah, that's the thing. Unfortunately, I feel I feel like again, we'll be interested to see what they do with the other subclasses of what they do with the 
uh, child divinity is mm. if that is more uh, enticing to use those sort of things rather than the wild shape. Yeah. Uh, and then the final one, uh, at level 14, I don't particularly care too much about this one myself, uh, but you always have the altar self spell prepared and can cast it without expending a spell slot. I mean, cool, but again, you probably have altars. Like, I don't know how important that is at level 14 onwards, really. It feels, again, it's a role play thing. And I always think when we talk about higher levels, that is, we want combat stuff. Yeah. I, that's what I'm, yeah. 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 I feel like they're nerfing a lot of it somehow and we're yet to look at the mages uh, mm. yet and I'll be interested to see what they do there but I do feel like overall it just feels a little bit devalued yeah uh, slightly we've we've come across that with quite a few of them now but like mm. we get very excited about the early levels and then it they, like you said it sort of peters out and what I'd noticed again because just because I've read a few of them just now mm. is that They've said in later playtests that we're going to rework, we're going to come back and relook at the epic boons because people have said, like like yourself have said, like yeah. it's not epic enough. And so they're like, we've heard you. We're going to leave it aside from now so we can concentrate on getting the rest of the class classes back up to speed. Yeah. But overall, I think there's some, there are some good changes there. I don't again. I'm I don't know when I'm next going to play in a campaign. I'll be completely honest because I'm obviously yeah. running my own campaign. But uh, I. I'd like, I'd, to be honest, ever since we've talked about rogues, I was keen to play a rogue character, to be honest yeah, with you. Because they're the best. Well, <laughs> they've got some very cool subclasses I was kind of interested in. So no, I, I know what you mean. Mike. I do like how, like like I said, with the paladin stuff, with the sort of divine mm. smite, and like you said, they're sort of streamlining it. It feels like, oh, this sounds exciting. Yeah. But then, yeah, as I said, it's sort of like, if you look too hard, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I have not we, I'm going to say the same thing over and over again. I think that's it. I think it's, I like the streamlining. I like the way it works. Just need to get better at the higher levels. Mm -hmm. The only thing I've actually responded to on the play, the response has been sort out level 20. And I've said it in every single one that I can. <laughs> I'm just like, please just make them caps. Well, it, it try not to be, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Hamilton, thank you so much for, for doing this topic. Um, oh, I mean, Hey, thank you. Happy thank you. Happy, happy to be here. Yes, absolutely. Where can we find you if you're on the internet? What have you got coming out? The usuals. What's where yeah, are you? What, what are you what doing? doing? What am I doing? Well, you can find me doing some more Warhammery stuff, Necromunda stuff on my YouTube channel, uh, Hazard Stripes, all one word. On mm. if you just go at if the YouTube forward slash Hazard Stripes, and I'm sure there'll be links below. There will be more DMs Travel Book Club coming. Yes. Uh, so we'll be returning to the Outlands and Sigil soon, which will be nice. Exciting. So you'll be able yeah. to see our faces doing that. Yes. We're doing our Secret Film Club, as we mentioned, which you can mm. find on the Hazard Stripes Twitch channel. And, and, and then some other it will things be, are still it, coming. It, yeah, it, it, uh, yeah, we're hoping to put the VODs on the on the DMs uh, yes. YouTube channel as well. So I you can press play at the same time and watch Yeah, I'll, I'll work out where the timestamp is. And it's like, and now play, because we yeah. do we do like to chat so <laughs> you're like what are they talking about and i'm like tee -hee -hee -hee. <laughs> <laughs> but in the second one we were quite there was we were very chatty and then moments where it gets super intense we were just like, yeah and then we were just quietly watching <laughs> watching <laughs> yeah don't don't invite us to the cinema we've discovered that uh yeah, we just chat like... all the way through the film <laughs> yeah that's enough about me fiona mm -hmm. who are you what are you when are you why are you where <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you asked. Uh, so my name is Fiona. When am I? I'm here right now in time and space. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I, why am I? Well, big question. I have to talk yeah. to my therapist about. Uh, <laughs> where am I? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, so where is what am I rolling? Which is a twice monthly RPG one shot podcast. As always, it's going very, very well. Die the RPG is currently coming out as we speak. Um, it is uh, incredibly intense. I was mm -hmm. I finished listening back to it and doing the basic edit of it. Uh, yesterday and it was it was a good game and I recently discovered that I was tagged in some post ages ago that said like oh I really enjoyed this game and the DM's very good and I was like oh that's me uh, but it was like over a month ago and I was like oh I've just seen it thank you <laughs> <laughs> but it was on it was on like Mastodon or something like that um, so that's coming oh, okay. out I've also at time of recording tomorrow will be the first episode of Alien Destroyer of Worlds oh, on Girls yes. from These Worlds yes yes uh, so future Fiona I know you're shutting yourself you'll be fine Rick uh, Award nom Nominated yes. show. <laughs> um, 
it's uh, it's quite a time i've been doing some prep for it it's been very exciting and yeah. oh it's gonna it's gonna be a hard one in the sense mm. of like it, i've obviously had lots of messages and they're going and they've been very lovely and they're like oh, i need to change this about my character um just a little item thing do you think this is a, do you think that's okay and i'm like it doesn't matter but okay <laughs> If you're interested, I starting, I've started to read through some tabletop RPGs called Too Long Did Not Read Tabletop yeah. RPGs, uh, where I'll take a take two hours essentially, and I'll go through as much of a, a quick start or a core book that I can do, and reading out mm. stuff aloud, and really just good. trying to. It's, it's interesting. Like again, it's a very much for me. It's not so much about the quality; it's more about the accountability of actually reading something. So I'm yeah, so bad exactly. At, but as bad we always it. say, how good is it? Would it be to be able to listen to someone just read the book to you? Because mm. they're big books, and there's no audiobook version. Yeah. And I think actually that's what you're basically doing. And yeah, uh, yeah exactly. I enjoyed the Sodom Veil vale one. I got really interested yeah. in the story, and I, I had to stop listening. I had to oh. go for dinner, and I was like. I don't know what happened. What happens to the to the little girl? Yeah, exactly. Oh. And the family. And why can't they why can't they leave the town blatantly? Because like, how are you past Red the flags. tree line? You're like, Yeah, it's like, uh oh. Well, uh-oh, we're, we're, no. we're living here now. And they're like, oh good. No, great. you don't. Great, great, they went, great. no, you don't. <laughs> and oh. like, it's good. It was good. So, so all those will be on the Where YouTube mm. channel, and uh, that's what will be for the foreseeable future. Uh, and yeah. finally, finally, uh, we have a Discord. Oh, yes. that's, that's where you can find all what we're up to and stuff like that. So there's a link down in the show notes and stuff. Yes. Come check us out, chat to us, uh, tell us tell us we're great, tell us we're incompetent, uh, but don't do that. Uh, be nice. <laughs> also, yeah, kindness is a free action, etc. Uh, <laughs> kindness is a free action. It is. Well, actually, it's not free. It's it's it gives you things. It's even better than free because you gain something back from it as well, which is wow. love in your heart. Ooh, it's a bit long to put on a t-shirt. Let's just stick to grumble, grumble. Also, did the... you see? On before we're about to say our catchphrase out, yes. Did you see that I said a potential? We got a potential sponsorship partner. I think out there. You sent yeah. You sent Samsung some... Samsung flip phone, and it's like hashtag live on the flip side or on oh, the flip side. And was I was that like, what it was? Yeah, I because. I, because I watched the video because I thought it was in the video and she said and she says get out no, or something like that no, and I was read like read the text and it goes hashtag live on the flip, flip side. side and I was like that is hilarious I totally didn't read the yeah, text and I was like there we go we should get a sponsorship because they're like hash using our or we can use that hashtag now because it's going to mean something get on the flip side get on the flip side <laughs> alright well thank you so much for listening uh, hope yeah. you are well and we'll, we'll speak to you hear to you all the things next time, next but, time. We'll, but we will see you see you on the flip flip side side. (laughs) get on the flip side get on the flip side which is kind of it's interesting but I'm not too bothered by that but the interesting is when people are online so I'm just trying to figure out that maybe I'll just do streaming at the weekend because that seems to be the time where everyone is the most people are online on Sunday afternoon so nothing else to bloody do you know you've had your Sunday roast yeah watch Antiques Roadshow uh (laughs) Fifty thousand pounds for a fucking cup? You're joking. Well, they, yeah, well, they had that recently on the BBC News. There was like some vase that someone was using to prop o- open the door to the loo, and then she, she was watching Antiques Roadshow, and it was like, "That looks like my vase. It's gone for ten thousand pounds. Oh shit! How <laughs> bugger! Oh, quick, quick, clean it then down!" Then you hear the door slam, yeah. smash. I think her one went in, uh, for about three thousand pounds because it was some rare Ming vase. It was Ooh. something like that, and you're like, bloody hell! Like, oh, anyway. My mom had some nice vases that I used as a bin, and she got really angry about because they were actually quite nice vases. I thought it was like, oh, that'd be a good bin for my room, and then she came wow. into my room like about a week later. Goes, why is that in the corner? I'll just use it as a nice bin, and she was like. <laughs> uh, that was uh, angry facey sort of like what are you doing oh, and i was wow. like i'm really sorry i thought I'm it'd sorry. be cool to have like a vase for a bin so <laughs> i was like a teenager and experimenting with my room design and i was like yeah, yeah that'd be cool yeah All right well speaking of bins and vases <laughs> D D. <D&D. laughs>